pizzerias and dog trainers have two things in common. Number one, pizza is delicious. Dog training is dope. But second is that they don't take business as seriously as they should. And they still do well enough to not care. Let me explain. A pizzeria, right? I think it's just really easy to think about a pizzeria in this context. I love pizza. I probably think about pizza three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. However, I'm probably not going to buy pizza three times a day. I'm really only going to buy pizza when I'm, one, really in the mood, two, hungry. I'm trying to just get something quick. Same thing happens with dog training. We don't think about getting dog training done until we really need dog training. So since the type of person who goes buys pizza and gets their dog trained is trying to solve an immediate problem right away, they need to solve this problem, they actively go search for a solution, they find the solution, they implement the solution, and the problem is solved. No big deal. However, businesses that operate on this type of model are always subject to when people are hungry for pizza and when people have problems with their dogs. So that's why during the pandemic, there was this huge boom in people going out and getting dog training done because they got puppies because they were home and they were like, this is the perfect time to get a dog. I need something else in my life to be crazy. So they get a dog and they go out and they have to find training to fix their behavior problems that they were having or do obedience or whatever they wanted to do with their dog. So they end up having uh, the business owner ends up having this ability to go, well, I don't need to work on marketing. I don't need to work on sales. All I got to do is be in the right place at the right time. And the same thing with the pizzeria. They just have to be on my commute home from work. right? As long as they're on the path, I can call them on the way and pick it up and then get home and feed my family for 30 bucks, whatever it is for a pie. And I'm from New York, so I, I love pizza and pizza's got to be good for me. That's just a personal side note. But imagine... If a pizzeria, and I've noticed this in the, the pizzeria, the pizzerias in my area, they've taken things slightly more serious. And there's some company that's in charge of this. It's clearly not the guys owning the pizzeria, but some company is in charge of taking it a little bit more seriously. And dog trainers can learn from this. And I think it's the dog trainer's turn because of how competitive it is. If I got nine pizzerias, which I do, uh, around my neighborhood, which one am I going to pick from? Am I going to pick from the one that gives me a discount? Am I going to pick from the one that's got the best pizza? Or am I going to pick the one that comes to mind first? Now, that's more of a reoccurring type of model. Pizzeria, like I could go and have pizza every single day. Dog training, most of the time what happens is people do training and then they don't go back to training really ever again. So what you need to do is be in the front of their mind constantly. You've got to be right there for when they need the training, you're the person that they think of. So here's what a pizzeria can do and how you can implement it in your own dog training business. So there is a pizzeria and they realized that if they just got the emails of the people that came to buy pizza once, they could email them every day of the week if they wanted to, but they just posed, uh, just picked one day of the week and they said, hey, we're going to send out this email at about three o'clock, letting people know that this is our busiest day. And that if they wanted to pick up a pizza on the way home to click this button and order their custom pizza now, so when they drive home, they can pick up the pizza and they can select a time that works best for them on, on when their commute is closest to the restaurant. This does a few things. Number one, it produces business instead of a passive waiting for people to come to the shop. They're actively trying to get people to come to the shop. Second, I can market to them forever if I change my restaurant, if we have different promotions, if we move locations, we can let people know. How often does a location move and you just don't go there frequently enough to invest time with the owner and like, communicate and talk with them that they don't tell you they're moving? And you're like, oh, they closed down. That's so sad. But really, they moved like five minutes away. And now you never find out and they lose your business and you lose an amazing pizzeria. You got to go find a new place. And that's sometimes terrible. So as a, a dog trainer, what you can end up doing is the exact same thing. If you just help somebody with one initial problem in the pizzeria, it's hunger. For dog trainers, maybe it's you're trying to get their dog's focus. If you can help them with that little, that little bit and you can get their email, then you can market to them later and constantly build value and provide more and more and more to the point when they're thinking, oh, man, my dog's jumping on grandma. Well, they've been contacting me. So let me go with them, right? They're not going to go to Google and type in dog trainers near me. They're going to go, this person's provided me insane value already. I know what they're 
teaching works. I know what their methodologies are. I like the person that's running the business. I have rapport with them. Let me just call them up and see if they can fix it. Odds are they can. So that's what you can learn from a pizzeria as a dog trainer. Number one, you should not just wait for people to have a problem and come to you. That is a very passive way to do business, and you are completely subject to the market. You are completely subject to the uh, the world, the weather, what's going on, people's economic conditions, a, a plethora of things that you have no control over. Take control over getting clients and getting people in the door. And you do that by providing insane value for a very niche problem that they have, and then building on that value, building a relationship, building a rapport so that they think of you first when they're hungry for pizza if you're opening a pizzeria or they're hungry to solve their dog's problem. I hope this was clear and you got something out of it. If you did, please let me know by either hitting the subscribe button or putting your questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next